I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he's a soon coming Lord and Savior. Uh, I'm excited to be ministering to you uh, the everlasting gospel. And today we're looking at a very, very, very interesting aspect. We are looking at end time deceptions and how they're filtered into our day to day living. I, 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 I need to mention that I've grown old enough to realize that indeed the body of Christ is not restricted to denominations, that the body of Christ is wider than the confines of doctrine and denominations, but it is centered and anchored on the Bible, which is the Word of God. I have grown old enough to realize that there is a difference between being a conspiracy theorist and being a preacher of the gospel. And I want to challenge all preachers that we should preach the word of God and not necessarily conspiracy theorists. Because the problem with conspiracy theories is they have a tendency of making the conspirator look like they don't know what they're talking about. But if we're going to focus on the word of God, if we're going to look at the word of God. The word of God is immutable. The word of God stands through time. Don't preach situations. Preach systems. If you're going to preach against something, don't focus necessarily on the situation and build theories around it. Rather, go through the system because systems are good and systems are bad. And when you preach preach uh, about that, preach preach about a system. And so today we're going to look at end time deceptions. And I want to begin, my good friends, by quoting scripture. And I will start in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We will be picking it up from um, verse uh, 13, 14 and, uh, and ending with verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, 14 and 15. For as for such are false apostles. Take note of that. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. They are transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Take note of that. Verse 14. And no wonder, for certain himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And no wonder Saturn himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. And then verse 15 says, Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And we'll keep on uh, referring to the scriptures once in a while as we go through this lovely discourse. Let's just have a quick, quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. Guide us into scripture. Blow us with the truth. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We thanksgive in our hearts. Amen. Uh, we're going to look at a number of things. We will look at num a number of positions. And uh, allow me to begin with this one. Um, the devil has brought himself out as an angel of light. Now, I, I remember when I was a bit young, I once saw a movie on TV and they said, the greatest lie that the devil has ever told the world is the lie that he doesn't exist. And that lie is very dangerous. And that is a lie that has indeed swept through a generation of young people and I might say even old people. It's a lie that suggests that the devil is just a fragment of, pure, of poor people who have nothing to do better with their time. It's a fragment, as Karl Marx put it, uh, it's an opium of the people and an opium of the masses. But I want to say to you, my friends, that the devil is real and he's active and he uses, he camouflages himself by giving suggestions of his absence. That is very important. That is very important that we understand, my friends, that one of the key ways that the devil has come is through what we call atheism. Atheism 
basically is, is a belief that there is no God and by extension there is no devil. And what I've seen amongst young people, when you have read a few books and you have read a bit of philosophy there and then you have read something there and you start thinking that you are so deep, that you are so deep and you can challenge the very existence of God. And then you've read one theory there which tells you that no, there was a, there was a woman who had a child and that child uh, was also uh, is something similar to what Jesus was. And so you start thinking now then the whole concept of, uh, of, the, of Jesus being born of a virgin is something that was picked up from some society. And you start thinking that you are very, very deep and eventually you just throw away the whole concept of God. Why am I raising this? Because the older I grow, the more I meet young people and um, so-called enlightened people who are giving up on God and going into atheism. Now, atheism is okay when things are okay. Let me throw that in. It's okay when things are okay. You look like you don't need God, but when things turn upside down, when situations are tough, when you need need an extension, when you need intervention from somewhere, then what will you do, child of God? What will you do when now the doctors have given up on you? What will you do when the employer has given up on you? What will you do when society has given up on you? You will need that God and the devil is trying to keep you away from that little wonder then that we have a society which has a lot of depression. We have a society where a lot of people are mentally healed ill we have a society where a lot of people are struggling with things that can be soothed and solved by embracing a god we in church sing songs and we say does jesus care when i'm going through all these things and the answer is oh yes he cares Oh yes, he cares. And I want to tell you, my friends, shun the, the evil of atheism. It's just a form of deception. The devil wants you to sound cool. Actually, there, there are some societies now, if you talk about God, it's as if you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are dull. You, it's as if you don't know what you're talking about. The sound cool by, by ignoring the very existence of God. And I want to say to you, my friends, God is real and the devil is real and is working through societies to create an environment where people don't believe in God and by extension they don't believe in him so he can come in he can mess up families he can mess up job situations he can come on just 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 do a bit of intro uh, just do a bit of of, of 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 an introspection try and look at your life try and look at your life the certain things that are not making sense those are things that you need to surrender to God. Let God come into your life. Let him bring his transforming power. That power will solve those issues in your life. The next issue I want to bring out is uh, it's a deception. It's a deception and this is an interesting one. And strangely, it's a, it's a deception that is found in church a lot. It's a deception that the devil is as strong as God. I'll say it again. It's a deception that, okay, if God is very strong, he's there. Then the devil is just slightly underneath, and that is pure nonsense. Let me give you an example. The great controversy, let me, let me, let me, let me explain the great controversy, then I'll give an example. The great controversy, my friends, is about the soul of man. And it's as if it's an election. Look at it this way. The great controversy is not about equal powers. But it's about individuals who have to choose which route they go to. Where do, they, do they go to God's side or do they go to the enemy's side? Now, let me give you this example. In an election, you can have an election with a billionaire and a very poor person. A billionaire and a very poor person. And they'll be standing. And as they are standing in that election, people will choose who they want to go for. They can choose to go for the billionaire or they can choose to go for the poor person. But that, my friends, doesn't mean that the poor person and the billionaire are at the same level financially. They are standing for an election. They are campaigning for office. People have to choose. Do they go for the billionaire? Do they go for the poor person? 
Yet at the end of the day, the billionaire and the poor person are at different levels. That, my friend, should make you realize in a miniature way that God and the devil are not at the same level. Yes, there are, there's a controversy for the souls of men and the, and the issue is over the souls of men. But, and the reason is because God has given us free will and a human has the right to choose. Just like a human has the right to vote for the leader they want. People can vote for the poor person instead of the billionaire. People can vote for the enemy who deceives us and destroys us. The one who came to steal, kill, and destroy. And leave the God who gives us abundant life. And leave the God who is coming to take us away from this sin-sick world. That is the context I want to bring with regards to the great controversy. It is not a controversy of equals. It is not a controversy of powers that are at the same level. That is very critical. Why is that important? It is important because I am irritated and I am fed up of this thing of church people being scared of Satanists, being scared of the Illuminati, being scared of... You, you meet someone and you see that this is a real man of God or this is a real man of God. People won't be scared of you. But let someone stand and say, I'm a Satanist. People start running away. That's just a deception. And that deception makes people think the enemy is strong. And that deception makes people give up on God instead of calling up. I've been to churches where people have made statements about Asazu Satan. Let me translate that. We don't know. Maybe the devil is going to bring this. Maybe the devil. The devil can bring whatever he wants. But let me tell you something. God is stronger than the enemy. So don't shiver. Don't be scared. Don't move away. Stay on the side of God. I've met young people who feel it's cool to say that they are, they are working for the kingdom of darkness. I remember working with this other young person many moons ago. And, and he was busy telling me, no, I'm in the kingdom of darkness. And, and do you know how I, how I managed to take him out of that? I told him, why would you choose to be on the losing side? Why would you choose to be on, on the side of someone who has already been defeated, someone who has already lost, someone who is actually waiting for his damnation? Why would you choose, choose to be on that side? That's the deception that the enemy has brought. And the simple reason is he chose to be on that side because he thought he was choosing a powerful side. And I want to say it, my friends, the devil's side is the losing side. Never for once think that that's a side that has strength. It's a losing side and God is on our side. What does the scripture say? If God be for us, if God be for us, who can be against us? No one. So if you decide to choose God, stay on God's side because that side is the winning side. Let me move on. Ah, <laughs> this is an interesting deception. And it's there in church. It's a deception that the Bible is not good enough. L let me take my time on this one. It's a deception that the Bible is incomplete. It's a deception that yes, the Bible is there. And we have our 66 books, but we, we need more. We need more. And let me tell you something. Read your Bible properly. In the Gospel of John. John says, if we were to take all the things that Jesus did and put them in one book, that book would cover the entire earth. He actually goes on to say, the entire earth would not be enough to cover that material. So what am I coming to say, my friends? I'm saying to you, the Bible, the 66 books are complete. They are suitable for doctrine, for reproof. For correction in righteousness. That, that Bible, this Bible is complete. It's complete. And if you don't realize that this is what is going to happen. You start going for material that is not found in the word of God. Material that is not authentic. And what you go, you're going to find yourself doing is you're going to start preaching strange doctrines. When I was growing up, you would say you're bringing strange fires. You end up bringing strange fires because of doubting the authenticity of the word of God. 
Let me tell you something. I've been in education for a long time now. And I've learned that you can never teach everything that is needed for an exam. You can try. You can, you can bring in all kinds of information. You can literally download so many things on Google, but it will never ever cover every single corner. In the exam, you have to eventually apply the knowledge that you got. So what you do in education is you look at the syllabus and then you say, if I give them this and I give them that and I give them that, then I've covered what is needed for a person to be able to apply the necessary knowledge and the necessary skills to get the answer correct. So the Bible is complete. It has given us, for those who are educated, it has given us theology, the study of God. It is complete. It has given us anthropology, the study of man. It is complete. It has given us um, soteriology, the study of our salvation. It is complete. It has given us Christology, the study of the Christ. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It is complete. It has given us humatology, the study of the Holy Spirit. It is complete. It has given us ecclesiology, the study of, 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 of the church and the church as an individual or the church as a group of, of individuals who work together. It is complete. It has given us eschatology, the study of the last day events and judgment and the second coming of the Lord. It is complete. It is complete. So don't start bringing strange fires. Yes, there are other books. Read them as, as good reference books or, or good literature or something like that. But never doubt the authenticity of the word of God. Because the moment you do that, ah, let me break this down. The moment you do that, then what you do is you now start bringing dilution into your life. Haven't you read? Haven't you heard? The Bible is clear. It says, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. That's what it says. And the moment you move away from this word, then you are now putting yourself on the wrong environment because now you want to start bringing in words uh, which are not authenticated. Uh, let, let me move further. Let me move further before I'm accused of being shallow. Because nowadays when you talk about the word of God, the deceived will accuse you of being shallow. Yet they don't know that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You will only have faith when you go deep into the word of God. And little wonder then that we have a lot of people who have died premature deaths because they don't have the shield of faith, the shield that comes as a result of the word of God. So please, 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 please. I know you want to sound deep, my friend. I know you want to sound enlightened, but please run away from the deception that the Bible is not good enough as the word of God. Uh, let me move on. Let me move on. One of the other issues is, uh, I don't know, um, um, it's, it's a touch on spiritualism, a form of spiritualism. That, that's, and I, wa I want you, I want you to, to catch this one very well. I want you to catch this one very well. Now, this is very critical. Paul says something interesting. And, 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 and Masabata, I know, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist, I know this is one of the scriptures we usually ignore. But unfortunately, like I said, I'm, I'm one of the preachers who just preaches what I find in the word of God. And the word of God has got something interesting. In, uh, in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Ah! 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 23. And it says, May the God of peace himself, <laughs> May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Now, he, may the God of peace make you holy completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body. Ah, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul makes it so clear. There's a spirit. There's the soul, there's the body. I won't take the interpretation that you might think I'm going into where now I start saying, nah, there's this, this, that. Ah, I, just want, I just want us to catch something. I want us to catch something. There's a spirit issue. I've, I've, I've had the, I don't want to call it a privilege, but I've had the, 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 um, 
yeah, I can't call it a privilege, but I've, I've had the opportunity of, yes, opportunity is the right word. I've had the opportunity of casting out demons from people. And the person will be complete. A person will be okay. You'll be talking. And then all of a sudden, when now you start praying and you start moving in the spirit and, and the move of God is there, all of a sudden the, this person just erupts and strange things happen. And, 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 and then the question is, where was this thing, this demon, where was it all along? There's a spirit, there's a soul, there's a body. It's in the body, but which part? Well, the body is outside there, but then there's the concept of the spirit. That's the part. I, I want you to follow me. That's the part that gets possessed. That is why a person will be walking with his body, and the body will be okay. Yet, there's something polluted. That spirit, and that is very critical. Because if you fail to appreciate the spiritual side of things, and you think we are just muscle and, and sinew and bones, then what is going to happen is when the devil hits you, you fail to handle spiritual issues. When the devil hits you, you just be looking at the circumstances uh, instead, of, instead of dealing with the enemy who is bringing confusion in your life. L let me move further. The devil targets the spirit part. The devil targets the soul. The devil targets the body. Now with the spirit part, what it does is this. He pollutes the spirit to the point that you can no longer reason when you're supposed to reason. Let me give you an example. When someone is possessed, you read, if you read it in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9, they say when, when this demon came on the young man, it would throw him into the fire, it would throw him into water. A normal person won't go into fire. A normal person won't go into water. But when you are possessed, when your spirit is diluted and messed up, you will go into fire and be burnt without realizing that you're going into fire. What am I trying to say? That is the reason why we have unnecessary debates over issues that are straightforward. Some people's spirits have been polluted and they are raising issues which should not be raised because their spirits are polluted. That also explains the issue of sexual orientation. We now have, you can't even talk about sexual orientation now. You can't, you, can't, you can't even preach the gospel and mention that God intended for a man and a woman to be together. You can't even mention such issues because now people will be telling, telling you that, no, 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 it's our rights, it's, it's, it's this, it's that. And, and the reason is that spirit has been polluted and the person is no longer reasoning properly. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1 actually, the Bible says the Lord ended up giving them a reprobate mind, a mind that is twisted, a mind that is messed up, a mind that sees good and calls it bad, a mind that sees bad and calls it good, a mind that will argue over issues that are straightforward, issues that even biology confirms. A mind that will argue about that. Why? Because your spirit has been polluted. That's the spiritual deception. Now let me go further with that one. Spiritual deception comes in this way. That is why, have you ever asked yourself, um, those of you who live in South Africa might have seen this, um, those who are across the world, maybe you came across it on the internet. We had instances in South Africa where a man of, a so-called man of God would stand in front of the church and give people petrol and they will drink it. And everyone will be looking at it, but in your right mind, why would you drink petrol? As if not enough, another one brought a rat and he, and he said, yes, 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 with this, you can eat it. And people ate that nonsense. As if not enough. Someone brought grass. People were running outside, busy eating grass. What had happened? Their spirits had been possessed. Their spirits had been taken over. So it didn't matter how hard you spoke against that. It didn't matter how strong you said, no, you guys, can't you see you're deceived? They could not see it. Why? Because their spirits had been taken over. I, I remember meeting a, a beautiful young lady, very, very beautiful young lady from that, uh, 
from, from, from that congregation. And she defended that truth, that, that nonsense, which she called the truth. And she defended it strongly, saying, no, you have to understand, the man of God was trying to say, you see, according to the Bible, you even use scripture to defend lies. You use the Bible. And, and she was saying, no, the Bible says you, you, um, you can drink poison and you'll not die. So the, the, the pastor was trying to test our faith. So that we could, that, that, who said you can do, do you need to eat a rat to prove that you're a child of God? But let me tell you something. That happens when you are not careful and not guarding your spirit and the enemy comes in and he possesses it. That's why a man of God can come, a so-called man of God, who stand and stand on top of people. They'll be bent over, kneeling, and then stands on top of them and is preaching. And they'll be feeling good, and the church will be saying hallelujah, because they've been deceived so strongly that they have surrendered their spirits to that man of God. Let me go further. That's why, and, and, and I, I like this because uh, Mel V uh, Broadcasting Network does not just reach Seventh-day Adventists, it actually reaches all kinds of people. And, um, and I want to say to my friends of the Pentecostal persuasion, please be careful who you call Papa. There is but one Papa who is our God. That is why when we pray, we say our Papa, our Father who acts in heaven. Be careful who you surrender to. As a spiritual father. And I know, of course, there'll be, there'll be reasons that are given. They'll tell you, no, like Elijah had Elisha, who was a spiritual son, and Elisha. And, and, and look, the, the logic is, is plausible. But let me tell you something. There are a lot of you, my friends, who have surrendered your spirits to deceiving spirits. And these deceiving spirits are now controlling your life. And you're constantly screaming. On top of your voices, I receive. What are you receiving? You are receiving and you are submitting to a spirit that takes over your life. And then all of a sudden, strange things are happening in your life. One side seems to be working out. The other side is messed up. And you are busy saying, I receive, I receive. And what is happening? is you have now subjugated yourself to a strange spirit. You are now submissive to that. That is why God would constantly deal with Israel harshly when they submitted to Baal. When God says you shall not go to any other God, it's not because he's trying to be, to be funny or he's trying to be, to be like a jealous lover. I know he's a jealous God, but, I, I, but of course you get my point. I'm, he's not trying to be, too, it's not a, a cheap spot. He's trying to deliver you from submitting to the wrong spirit. Because when you have submitted to the wrong spirit, it will not be well for your soul. When you are submitted to the wrong spirit, there will be mischief that you can't explain. Some of you right now have sexual orientation that is messed up. Some of you are constantly committing adultery or constantly committing fornication and you can't control yourself. You're submitted to the wrong spirit. Some of you are constantly going through hard times. When you solve this issue, another issue rises up. When you solve this, another one comes in. There's no peace in your life. You are submitted to the wrong spirit because this is what happens. For every good that you get when you have submitted to a wrong spirit, it comes with baggage of misfortune. And that is why you find that one area seems to be working out. Maybe you're getting promotions, but your relationships are constantly dis being destroyed. And then somebody quickly says, no, it's just the devil. Ah, you went to the wrong spirit. You have submitted to the wrong spirit. And that wrong spirit is busy messing you up. Oh, my good friends, it's very important that we are careful who we submit to. And let me give you the easiest way. James says in James chapter 4, submit yourselves to God. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I like telling people and I give testimonies of how I rebuke the devil and I'll, I'll rebuke the weather and I'll do this and, and, and I'll rebuke demons and I'll rebuke situations and I'll, I'll do all kinds of things. And I've seen so many people look at me in a strange way as if I'm trying to put spices. That's what we call in Africa when we say you're putting spices. It means you're, you're trying to, to embellish a story. You're trying to make it sound good and you're, you're adding details that are untrue. And people who rush to say that 
are people who have not submitted to God. Because when you totally submit to God, there is power, real power in God. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There is power in the blood. And when you submit to God and submit to the blood of Jesus Christ, you find real power. But if you submit to the wrong papa, if you submit your soul to anything, I'm telling you, my friends, you'll be messed up. That's a deception. That's one I wanted to raise. And closely tied to this thing, I want to mention to you, my friends, that, um, and this is something that, that may, most of you have heard if you, are, if you have been in church for a while, the issue of sexuality. Be careful. Be careful how you han handle the issue of sexuality. When you are sleeping with someone, it's not just sex. It's not just biology. Now, I know the educated who say, no, it's just, it's just simple copulation. Nah, 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 nah. There is physical copulation, but there's also spiritual copulation. Souls are getting bound together. Yes, you might use protection, and you might use contraceptions, and as a result, there'll be no conception physically. But guess what? There'll be conception spiritually. You will now be creating what they call soul ties. You'll be thinking it's just okay. Yet you have now taken on the soul. And some of you have slept with so many people that now the soul is just a mess up. Remember, remember, I said there's a body. There's a soul. There's a spirit. Now the soul is messed up. The spirit is messed up. And guess what? Even the body too is messed up. You are 25 and you look like you're 65. Body messed up. Your soul is messed up. Your mood swings come left, right, and center. You swing from one direction to the other. There is something within your system that has messed things up. You are carrying the misfortune of John. You are carrying the problems of Peter. You are carrying the temper of, uh, of, of Paul. You are carrying, you are carrying the... the the, the laziness of Jabulani, you are carrying the, the promiscuity of Veli, you are carrying the confusion of, of Benjamin, you are carrying, so you are carrying all kinds of things. And you are surprised why you're not getting married. You're not getting married, you're so sorry for that. <laughs> and you're surprised why things are not working out in your life. And I'll tell you, my friend, things are not working out. Things are not happening because your soul has been intertwined with so many different things. Young man, you think you're a player going around. You've slept with them. You've done Pauline. You have done Yvette. You have done Busi. You have done Svongile. You have done... And you feel you are deep. You are, you are, you are a man. Yes, you are a man. Yeah, you are a man to your friends. But what you have done... You have brought Yvette's problem into your life. You have brought Pauline's confusion. You have brought Swangile's depression. You have added all these things into your system. And while you are working, your system is messed up. So, my friends, be careful of the deception that sex is just sex. It is not just sex. It is a process that binds souls. It binds souls. And not only that, it messes up your spirit. Oh, my good friends, I, 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 want, to, I want to wrap up. I want to wrap up. And uh, I want to say, in these last days, be careful. Because the devil has disguised himself as an angel of light. This is what the devil does. Jesus does a miracle. The devil copies. Does a miracle. Jesus does something powerful. The devil copies. He does something powerful. And while, so, be careful of falling for outward displays of power which are not accompanied with inward transformation. Let me say that again. Be careful of outward displays of power which are not accompanied by inward uh, transformation. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. You cannot stand and tell me you're a man of God, yet you are corrupt. You say you're a man of God and you're a man of power. Receive too. And receive. And you're doing all kinds of, of spectacular things. 
God's people, don't rush to be deceived. The Bible is clear. It says in the last days, in the last days, such things will happen. And it's also clear, it says in the last days, Matthew 24, there will be false prophets. Isn't it surprising that every corner you go to, there's a prophet. Prophet Van Ivan Ivan. Prophet Van Ivan Ivan. Go that every square meter in Africa. You oh Lord have mercy. Africa. 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 Every square meter, Prophet Van Ivan. Prophet this, this. Prophet that, that. And we are excited. No, that's a man of God. That's ah! There are false prophets. Actually, the false prophets are in the majority. Let me give you a simple illustration. Haven't you read the book of uh, the, the book of First, First Kings? Very clear. Elijah was alone. The false prophets were 450. Do the math. One real prophet, 450 false prophets. And this is very important. Because I want to go to the flip side before I come back to this issue. I want to go to the flip side. And the flip side is this, my friends. There are some people who have totally negated the power of God in the church. God is still in the business of miracles. God is still in the business of transformation. God is still changing lives. God is still in the business of, of, of healing the sick. God is still in the business of breaking bondage in homes. God is still in the business of the miraculous and the powerful. The God of Pentecost is still the God of this generation. He's the same yesterday. He's the same God today. And he'll be the same God forevermore. But listen very carefully. When there is a powerful person here, the ratio, <laughs> the ratio is there's one there, powerful, real, genuine man of God, genuine woman of God. And out of that genuine one, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of false men and women of God who, by the way, will also have spectacular things. Let me go to the, to the issue of uh, Elijah with the prophets at Mount Carmel. They were not there because they were just picked up randomly. They were there because they had proved themselves. They had a CV of the spectacular. They had a CV of the profound. They looked good. They looked powerful. But when they met a real man of God, God said, enough of this nonsense. And they prayed for fire, and fire couldn't come down. But when the man of God prayed, fire came down. What am I trying to say? Because, my friends, we are about to get into a, a spectacular flow of the power of the Holy Ghost. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we preach about it a lot. We call it the latter rain. It's also a biblical concept, the latter rain. The, there will be a move of God. That is going to be so strong. That is going to be so powerful. And, and there, there'll be people getting healed left, right, and center. And there'll be great things happening. And there'll be great power. But it will be a genuine one. Now, be very careful. Because while the genuine ones will be going on, there'll be a lot of fake ones. I want to move. I want to move. And before, before I wrap up, I want to move to you, my friends. That... There are different levels. Oh, God, let me say this very well. Let, 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 let me get up close and personal. There are different levels in the kingdom of darkness. Let me just give you a quick one. There are con men. That's basic level. These are just con men. These are people who pretend to do a miracle. They will talk to someone and say, just pretend like you came in limping and then you came in limping and then afterwards the person says receive healing and then the person walks away. Those, those, are, those are cheap. Those are just con men. Then there are those who are intertwined with the enemy so much. They are intertwined in the kingdom of darkness. They have sold their very souls and spirit. These are people who deliberately do it and they have submitted to God. And these who are at this level are able, my friends, to do miracles. Let me give you an example. Johannes and Jambres in the book of... Uh, um, the, the, in, the, in the book of Exodus, they don't mention them, but later on in the Bible, their names are mentioned. These are people who came before Moses. When Moses threw his stick 
and it turned into a snake. What happened? They also threw their sticks with the other false prophets. And the sticks also turned into snakes. So, please, don't just go around and go like, no, these are just con men. No, there are some who do miracles in courts which look genuine. But they are of the kingdom of darkness. Back in the day when I was growing up in the STA church, we would make a solid statement and we would say to the law and to the testimony, if you speak not according to this word, then the truth is not in them. That is why, remember, when, when, when we started off, I mentioned that you have to make sure that you don't negate the Bible as the word of God. Remember I said the Bible is enough as the word of God because to the law and to the testament, if they speak not according to this word, then the truth is not in them. And some will actually use the word and they'll seem as if they're saying the truth. But then they'll just bring in a bit of error. Those of you who play golf know that once you miss the angle a bit, just a bit, once you miss the angle a bit, if you are supposed to go at 30 degrees, the moment you now go at 35, 40 degrees, when you are hitting the swing, it doesn't look like you have missed a lot. But when the ball is now going, that's when you go like, ah, I thought I was aiming for that. But now look, my ball is in the bushes. And that's how deceivers come. They'll come with a lot of truth, a lot of truth, then just a slight twist. And before you realize it, you are deceived. And you'll be thinking the men and women of God because they'll start off with the word of God and then slowly but surely twist and move away. And that is why it's important that you should be someone who stays on the word of God. My good friends, while there's a lot of deception, I'm excited to tell you that there's also a lot of truth. While there's a lot of deception, I'm also excited to tell you that there is power in the word of God. While there's a lot of deception, I'm excited to tell you that Jesus Christ is still in the business of transforming souls. He's still in the business of solving family problems. He's still in the business of blessing his children. He's still in the business of healing people. He's still in the business of transforming lives. He's still in the business. Back in the day when I was young, this I would preach it. would say he's still in the business of turning prostitutes into proclaimers of the message. He's still in the business of turning liars into true witnesses. He's still in the business of turning chief of sinners like me into fairy preachers of the everlasting gospel. He's still in the business of plucking out young people, regardless of their habits, pulling them out of their sin and making them whole. But when he convicts you, when he speaks to your soul, don't rush to make excuses. Obey, submit to him, ask him to transform you because he's still in the business of transforming souls. So my good friends, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's still in the business of loving and caring and lifting. He's still in the business of opening our eyes. That is why even people like me, you, those of you who have followed my ministry, I'm, I'm a faith preacher. I'm a faith preacher. I preach on faith nonstop. I bring in all different angles. But I want to tell you, my friends, that there are deceivers out there who are giving us wrong faith lies the preachers out there who are bringing truths that are not centered on the immutable word of God. There are preachers out there who are deceiving and confusing the flock. So my good friends, my good, good friends, be anchored on Christ. There's a song that we sing in the Seventh-day Adventist church. It's a song that is also sung in many other denominations. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Why? Because all other ground is sinking sand. Stand on Christ. Be anchored on Christ. And Christ will see you through. And he will guide you into great truths. 
Because he says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life itself. And the good news is, he doesn't just move, leave us as orphans. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he will guide you into all truths. And when you are guided into all truths, you'll be able to see that this is deceptive. This is a deception. This is from the kingdom of darkness. Now, this, this might look good, but no, 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 no. He will guide you into all truth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of his word. And may he sustain us. And may he keep us focused on the truths that are found and anchored on Jesus Christ. Guided by the Holy Spirit. I just want to pray for someone right now. I just want to pray for someone who's saying, I've heard you preach a man. And I think I lost it somewhere. And maybe I made some soul ties. And maybe my spirit has been submitted to the wrong spirit. And no, 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 preacher man, I've heard you. And, 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 and I think I've, I've argued over things that I'm not supposed to argue. And, 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 and I've tried to put the word of God aside. I want to pray for someone right now. Someone who's saying my soul is messed up. My, my spirit is upside down. I need, to, I, I need transformation. I want to pray for someone right now. And if you're there, this prayer is for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we submit to you. And we ask that great Jehovah, you move in the lives of your children. Father, I bring before you young men and young women, including adults, who have been deceived by the enemy. And Father, we pray that you break the grip of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the same name of Jesus Christ, we pray. That, Father, any confusion that the enemy has brought in these homes, Father, in these lives, Father, should be destroyed by the power of the truth that is found in Jesus Christ. Let there be transformation. Let there be deliverance. Let there be growth. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ. Father, move. Open our eyes. Father, the scriptures are so clear. Paul said it. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. So let the veil of deception be removed. And let us see you, Jesus Christ, for who you really are. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ, we pray. With thanksgiving our hearts, deliver that young man. Deliver that young woman. Deliver that adult woman. Deliver that adult man. Deliver us all. Deliver men and Father, I want to pray in a special way for men and women of God who have been deceived. People who are preaching and, uh, and thinking that they are saving God but they are deceived. Father, I pray that you open their eyes right now in Jesus' name. And I also pray for those who are trying to be philosophical and funny over nothing instead of being centered on the word of God. I pray for them right now. The mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ we pray. With thanksgiving our hearts, let everybody say, Amen. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. Remain steadfast. Don't let the enemy deceive you. He might come as an angel of light, but when you're anchored on God, you will not be deceived. And don't worry, my friends. In a little while, we'll be going home. In a little while, we shall overcome. God bless you, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.